What is Splinterlands and how do you play? Hello guys, welcome back to Lunar Crypto. And so today we'll talk about this article written by Hassan Shafiq and published on August 25th, 2021 on CoinMarketCap.com. Splinterlands is an innovative addition to the play-to-earn games in the NFT world. Previously known as Steam Monsters, the game operates in the Hive blockchain and belongs to the trading game genre. In Splinterlands, players fight against monsters to get in-game rewards. Splinterlands provides a platform for card lovers to play, trade, and earn in-game rewards from their desktop and mobile phones. The game currently offers 283-plus cards which players can combine to increase their character abilities and become stronger. There are seven stats that define how good a player is. Speed, armor, mana cost, and different types of attack, including ranged, magic, and melee. Splinterlands has different factions, also known as splinters. Every card belongs to a certain faction, fire, earth, dragon, death, life, water, and neutral, or mercenaries. To gain an advantage over other players in Splinterlands, there are several rarities and abilities. Splinterlands offers a variety of in-game activities for players to participate in and earn rewards daily. There are several forms of gameplay, including quests, rank play, and tournaments. Players participate in the game on many different levels to earn card packs, rarity, magic potions, and the most unique item which is dark energy, or digital currency which is used to buy items for the in-game shop. Players in Splinterlands can combine cards to upgrade the levels, rent cards to other players, or convert their cards to various cryptocurrencies. Unlike most NFT games on the market, Splinterlands offers the feature of cross-compatibility with other blockchains including Tron, Ethereum, and Wax. Another unique point of Splinterlands is that the game has its own blockchain, which provides in-game stability and frequent upgrades to the card trading game. For new players, Splinterlands can prove to be a challenging experience. Here are some tips that'll help anyone looking to excel quickly in this trading card game. 1. Setting a Game Plan There can be different goals for every player in this Splinterlands game. It can be making money, reaching the Champion League, gathering resources, or just playing for fun. Since there are multiple ways to play Splinterlands, it's helpful to have a clear concept of your objectives and priorities early on. It will also benefit you in this area if you have a decent notion of how much money you want to spend in Splinterlands. For example, with your daily prizes and a modest expenditure, you can most likely create a silver level deck. If you want to play in the elite leagues, on the other hand, you'll almost certainly have to invest a substantial amount of time and money to guarantee that your deck is competent for the challenges you may face in advanced leagues, you may also use decks that have been made by others to help you get started. In the end, it doesn't matter how you choose to play as long as you're having a good time. 2. Knowing your buying options Improving your cards will put you in a better position to complete in any league you choose. When it comes to purchasing brand new cards, you have a few options. The simplest method is to use the Splinterlands in-game market which can be found directly in the Splinterlands website. You'll either require credits or Dark Energy Crystals or DEC to buy the cards from the website. There are a couple of wonderful cards you can get cheaply that can aid you in the Bronze, Silver Leagues, so search around and see what you can find. Peak Monsters is another excellent resource for identifying possible card bargains. You may also rent cards at a low fee from this location. 3. Take Part in Tournaments Tournaments are another enjoyable method to improve your Splinterlands abilities, while also earning DC. Every league has active tournaments going on all the time, so you'll be able to pick one that suits your skill or deck level. 4. Keep an eye out for critical updates Splinterlands is continually evolving and fresh information regarding the game's development is released on a near-weekly basis. It's critical to stay up to date with the latest news, especially with significant features being added on a constant basis. Use a variety of resources that are scattered on the internet and follow official Splinterland social channels to avoid missing any critical updates. 5. Keep the DEC capture rate below 100% You will see a percent statistic called capture rate on your DEC balance if you hover over it. The greater this number, the more DEC you'll earn from rated matchups, while the capture rate lowers with each match you win. It refills at a rate of approximately 25% each day, presumably. Always play enough battles to maintain your capture rate below 100%, since this will allow you to maximize your DEC per fight. 6. Research other players' decks to identify playing strategies On the leaderboard page, filter by the lead to view your own rating as well as the rankings of other players in your domain. Looking at other players' cards and fights to see how they play Splinterlands will prove to be highly beneficial. Although you may find your opponents to have better or unique cards, 
Their experiences may frequently provide insight into how you should construct your deck. Splinter Shards or SPS is a cryptocurrency governance token that works as the primary currency in the Splinterlands card trading game. The main purposes of SPS include decision-making ability and control over stakeholders, asset owners, and player base. There are a total of 3 billion SPS tokens. The tokens will be distributed as follows. 10% to the Foundation or DAO, 30% will be allocated to staking, 13.33% for airdrop, 6.66% for the private sale, 9% will go to the SPS team, 1% will go to partners or advisors, and 30% will be allocated for play-to-earn activities. The in-game governance activities will serve as the main goal of Splinter Shard's tokens. SPS token holders can vote on the current or upcoming changes to Splinterland's game. All voting on the proposals related to in-game governance will be posted on the Hive blockchain. The seriousness of the proposed changes will depend on the amount of SPS tokens staked by a certain player. Over time, players will be able to vote on updates to card balance, DEC inflation pools, quest or season leaderboard rewards, and other important upgrades. As of August 25, 2021, Splinter Shards or SPS is trading at $0.3728. Whether Splinter Shards will hit $1 in the near future depends on a lot of factors. The NFT gaming scene has exploded in recent months, with games like Axie Infinity, which is another play-to-earn game, becoming the first NFT game to surpass $1 billion in sales, taking the AXS crypto to record high levels. Splinterlands may follow the same route as AXS, which may help Splinter Shards experience a big increase in price if the popularity of NFT games continues to rise steadily. Also, there are not many trading card games in the NFT zone that have their own blockchain. An NFT game with a blockchain increases trust among the investor community, and there is a chance that more investments start coming in causing an increase in the price of Splinter Shards or SBS. Now, considering a lot of volatile factors, it's very hard to say in which direction Splinter Shards token will tilt, which is why it's advisable to keep an eye on the market indicators and technical opinions of cryptocurrency experts before investing in this token. And if you like our video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.